Well, good morning, folks, from Jeff's Little Engine Service. I have a good one for you today. It was quite a mystery, but we solved it. Let me show you what we have. So it's a Craftsman lawnmower, DGS 6500, and it has one of these piece of crap Kohler 26 horsepower twin cylinder Courage engines. And we have determined that there is no spark to it. So after doing a little bit of research, I learned that there was a service bulletin put out on these uh, that they've changed the ignition systems. Um, so you have to buy a conversion kit to fix this no sparking problem. Whether it be the spark advance module that's not working or one of these coils that's not working, uh, you have to buy the whole kit to update it back to a magneto style ignition uh, where you don't have to have 12 volts running to it for it to work. You just have to have the magnet on the flywheel zooming past the coils which creates the spark. So to get to those components uh, we're going to have to take off this engine cover first thing and this conversion kit uh, it's top secret information only I know about it and one other guy that lives on the East Coast and they have to keep us separated in case something happens to one of us so keep that in mind you're getting some top secret information so let's go ahead and take this engine cover off so we can see uh, what the heck we're dealing with here so let's go ahead and take this engine cover off so we can see uh, what the heck okay so I think that's the 8 millimeter there. Good old Kohler, they seem to use all metric. Take off your fuel pump here. And I'll check under here to see if we have any. Looks like you can take off the air filter here. I don't see any uh, mounting bolts down in there. Actually, that might be able just to stay in place while you take this off. So I see two bolts in the front here, both 10 millimeters. Okay. Oops, I have one more back there I gotta get. That's another one of these eight millimeters. And another eight millimeter here. And there's one tucked back in here, just like on the other side. Man, colors are a piece of crap. You guys will hear me say that more than once today. These replacement parts are not cheap either. I think this kit, uh, is about a hundred dollars. While we have this cover off, it'll be a good time to change that starter motor too. Okay, let's see here. I think I'm gonna have to take this thing off and it looks like it just kind of pops out of there.
just be careful you can break these little plastic pieces but they do just pop right off this is how I'm doing it. I'm just sticking a screwdriver right in there and oops broke one there we go whatever all right, looks like we did it. There we go. So just look at all this nonsense that Kohler puts in here. I mean, usually you just have one wire going to the coil. They decided to put four. So the conversion kit basically consists of two new coils. You can see we have a coil over there too. And that's it. So, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to wire this thing once these coils are out of here. Hopefully there'll be some damn directions in this conversion kit to tell me how to rewire this thing. These engineers should be ashamed of themselves. Time to go back to school, boys. They uh, barely even connected these wires when they were plugging it in there, so... That's what I'm talking about. Kohler's a piece of crap. And you have some more fine workmanship on this side. Well, on this side, you can see there they left about a half inch of wire hanging out as well. You can see this starter gear is about to fall off. Check that out. Not good. And luckily the uh, ring gear hasn't been damaged yet from that gear flopping around on there, so that's good. Oh, there is damage, brutal. Yeah, see, he's missing teeth already on his flywheel. That is not good. So, just doing some investigating here. Uh, the green wires both go to ground, so... So yeah, the green wires go to ground. They both make it over here. Both go into this harness. Both go into this connector and then they both go out. And this part grounds on the carburetor and the other side you can't see here, it grounds on the uh, head. And this is the kill switch. And the white is the kill switch, and the same thing, the white from over here goes and it goes into this connector where they meet. And so that's uh, normally would be your kill wire or what when you turn it off it would ground that wire. And then we have the red here. And then the red wires are the power that comes into these uh, piece of crap units. So this ignition system has to have 12 volts coming from the battery into it for it to function correctly. And this conversion kit we're getting is going to eliminate that. Uh, so you'll just have coils on each side and then a ground wire. You won't have to have 12 volts going to the coil for them to work. Uh, just when this magnet here spins by the coils, it creates the spark. Now that's a proper ignition system. That's the way lawnmowers have been doing it for decades. I don't know why Kohler thought they needed to uh, change things up. And this component here, uh, I think it's a voltage regulator because I could see the wires co look like they go up underneath to the stator. So I think that, that that's what that is. If it's not, I'll confirm. From what I understand, some of these uh, older ones with this system actually have a Spark Advanced module somewhere. Uh, this one is a 2006 or 2007 model, I believe. And it looked, I don't see any other uh, electrical component on here other than these two coils and this uh, regulator rectifier. So I got this kit from Kohler. Apparently this is the part number. And uh, you can look inside here and 
And if you look, you see it comes with a couple of uh, brand new coils or magnetos, whatever you want to call them. A uh, little wiring harness. And thank goodness some directions. They're not written down very well uh, as far as an explanation, but I think we can figure it out. First thing we're going to have to do is just remove these coils. And they call this version, uh, these are DSAI modules. Apparently there's a DSAM module set up too. I think those are the ones that have the separate um, Spark Advance unit on them. But for this one, we're just going to disconnect the wires. And we can take these old coils off now. Looks like that might be an 8 millimeter there. been raining pretty hard out here the past uh, week or two. That's the garbage man dumping out all my beer bottles. Ha! Ah, actually it's the neighbor's beer bottles. Okay, so just like that, we can remove the coils. And you'll see the cables kind of, there's a little slot for the cables to go. You'll want to save the mounting bolts. But you can throw these pieces of junk away. And you see the cables, and there's actually a spot that the cable routes down through there, a little slot in the metal. So there's not a left or right coil, but it does say to install it with the flat side the way Kohler puts it out towards me. So I would assume that it's that way. I'm going to go ahead and clean off these posts here. Uh, just because it's important for the coil to be grounded well. So let's clean those up. We'll just have a little sanding block here. Much better. see this flywheel is missing some uh, teeth which is not good the guy waited too long to get a new starter motor and there he is folks he's trying to ruin my video right there Ah, just kidding. I like the garbage man, he's a good guy. Okay, now that that nonsense is gone, we can get back to making a video here. So the coil gap is 0.25 millimeters or 0 0.009 inches. So that would be nine thousandths of an inch. So there we go. It's the one we want. And we'll just put it between the coil and the magnet. There, there we go. So you just, that's where you want, so that's where you'll want to check the gap right at the magnet. 
and uh, just make sure you have it nine thousandths. You can do it this way. The magnet holds it in place. It's kind of tricky though because if you tighten this side down too tight, you're not able to move this side to adjust it. So you kind of have to go back and forth. However you need to do it to make it work. Call that good. And we'll go back and check the other side, make sure we're still good there. That's a pretty tight gap on this coil. Briggs, I usually gap at 12. See, now this side's too tight. So I'll back it off and readjust, kind of go back and forth until I get it right. Okay, I had to turn off my camera and uh, cuss my way through it, but eventually I got these coils on and uh, gapped correctly. I ended up gapping them at uh, 10 thousandths because every time I tried at 9 and tightened them down they would be too tight. So I ended up using the 10 thousandths feeler gauge to do this. Uh, every time I locked them, uh, tightened down the screws with the 9 thousandths feeler gauge and rechecked, they, it, they were too tight for whatever reason. So uh, I used the 10 thousandths and that seemed to get these gaps right where I want them. And these bolts right here, you'll tighten down to 35 to 55 inch pounds. Trust me, you don't want to over tighten them because if they break, you're screwed. So the next thing that it says to do is connect the wiring harness here to the coils. And uh, it shows this way, so just bend that tab up a little bit. Put on that side. Put on this side. And then they tell you to um, zip tie this wire down to the plastic manifold here so it stays out of the way so we'll do that well it looks like I'm about out of large zip ties so I will have to put two small ones together so let's go ahead and start right here all right so let's go ahead and anchor down this right here. This side's a little easier to get to things. Actually, I, I think I'm gonna hold off because they tell you to zip tie all this extra onto there too, so I'm gonna wait till I figure out what to do there. So the wires here that go to uh, the, the main wiring harness uh, you can see there's a red one and a white one. The red one was the 12 volt power uh, into the old system and the white one is essentially the kill wire. Now don't get it confused with this other white one that uh, go, just goes to the other plug here. So you'll want to cut this one. So you'll want to cut this white wire that goes to this plug connector. You'll want to cut it as close as you can to the connector and then of course you want to strip a little bit off so you can put the new connector on here oh nice they actually have zip ties in the kit here for once I can say good job Kohler anyways so here we are uh, yeah, there's the wire I cut. This is the connector that comes in the kit. I'm going to put it on here and then crimp it down. I don't know why they have that. All right.
yep we're good so then you hook this up to the new wiring harness that you just installed looks like they what the hell you supposed to fold it up or something All that thing is doing is preventing me from finishing the job. So I'm gonna cut that fuck <laughs> out of here. So then at this point you'll want to zip tie this stuff down here to get it out of the way. Tuck this connector down here. And uh, I think we'll be able to go back together and test this thing out. There's our starter motor. First thing we'll want to do is disconnect uh, the power that goes to it. So it looks like this is an 11 millimeter bolt or nut. Boy, that starter motor is in bad shape. Look at how it's wiggling around on there. Okay, and it looks like those are 10 millimeter bolts. And there's one under here. Look at, you can see that chipped tooth right there. This uh, flywheel gear has like three chipped teeth none of them are in a row so it's still functioning and the customer says that he wants me just to fix it like this so he can run it for another year if possible so the old starter motor was working so I'm assuming a new one will work better we'll see All right, hopefully this will be easy. And I went ahead and ordered uh, an aftermarket one. I don't normally use aftermarket parts. This one was half the price of a Kohler one, which was, a Kohler one was like $140, $150. Uh, this one I got for about $70, and it's through DB Electric off of Amazon. And I've purchased their equipment before, and it seems to be pretty good, so I purchased it again. Every once in a while, you can get uh, lucky with aftermarket parts. If you find a good aftermarket company with quality parts, you can, uh, you can stick with it. All right, let's cinch this baby down. Not too tight. You can bust these. Put the power back. I think I'll fire this thing up without the engine cover on. Just so we can see what's what's going on with it. Make sure everything's fixed before we put it back together. Alright. So we'll hook up the spark plug here. 
do the one on the other side. Put the spark plug in over here. I want to be careful starting the engine without the cover on, make sure all the wires are out of the way. All right, folks, keep our fingers crossed. Hopefully we can fire this baby up. All right, let's test this baby out.